And Ross Gebe, a co-founder, president and CEO at Gebe Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management joins us now. Ross, let's talk about those longer data treasury yields rising. Could it surge further? Well, you know, obviously we don't know what's going to happen next, but the yields are so high right now, it just doesn't really make any sense when we see inflation in the United States at 3.2 and yields well into the fours now, 4.3, let's say. You know, this is the best real rate of return investors have gotten in Treasury since I was a small child. And it's the highest mortgage rates that I've seen since I was a small child. So, you know, rates are incredibly high. And then when you contrast it, what's happening in China and the rest of the world in the recession that China's in and, and, and the real slowdown we're seeing in the global economy, these rates just don't make a lot of sense. So, um, you know, this is an interesting time. Mm. And those rates are rising on, of course, the messaging from the Fed that they're expecting um, those risks, those upside risks to inflation to remain. Um, what is your expectation uh, on how the Fed will move in its September meeting? Are we expected to see it maintain or hike then? Uh, CME has said that there is a stronger chance of another quarter point hike much later in the year, perhaps during a November or December meetings. I mean, it seems insane to think that they're going to continue to raise interest rates at this point when these incremental changes in interest rates on the short term don't change the economy at all. And the long term interest rates that have risen rapidly over the last month does change the economic outlook completely. So the Fed doesn't need to do anything. They're getting what they want with much higher rates They it, that we don't have inflation anymore. So I'm not exactly sure why they think inflation is going to accelerate so much to the upside when there's so much downside risk. But the Fed has been wrong for several years now about everything they've been doing, and they just continue to blather around making bad decisions and really hurting the global economy, not just here in the United States that they're trying to force into a recession, but the rest of the world seems to already be heading towards recession. So, uh, Ross, also one thing we we're also watching closely is we talked about what's happening in China um, latest developments uh, just a while mm -hmm. ago this morning, we see Evergrande you know, seeking a bankruptcy protection. Uh, what is your initial reaction to this? I mean, was this unexpected? And uh, what are, you know, the chances of a contagion? Uh, we see other property developers go the same way. Country Garden is, someone, uh, is, is one that we're watching very closely. Well, it's not surprising because the company has been in trouble for some time and you know, the numbers didn't seem to make sense for, for Evergrande at all. But I think what is worrisome is we really don't know how bad the debts are in China for so much property that has been overbuilt in China and not being used. And now Chinese investors are starting to feel the pain of making investments into these properties that are now not paying off for people on top of a huge amount of unemployment. So not only do I worry that China has become a deflationary spiral and they're certainly in a recession and, you know, really at risk for social unrest at this point, um, because really Xi's miracle has been a fraud. And, you know, so basically they built up a bunch of stuff that was fake and now it's all coming to roost. And so the Chinese government is going to have to eat these losses one way or another, because I don't think the people are going to be that excited when so many people made so much money during the good days in China. And now, you know, the people are really going to suffer through these bad days under Xi's really poor management of China. So, you know, the good news is, you know, I think it puts America back in the driver's seat in the global economy. The bad news is if you're China, you're looking at a hole and I just don't know how deep that hole could go. Mm. And maybe if we could just get an you know, your gauge on, on how badly this could hit um, uh, the Chinese economy. We know property is a key pillar. Evergrande's debts, you know, by the end of last year, was about 2% of the country's entire GDP. So definitely there will be quite a significant impact there to the economy. Absolutely. I mean, once again, you know, economies across the globe really thrive around real estate development because it employs so many people, uses so many resources, and really helps economy. So any growing economy, you see cranes and you see construction and building. And, you know, in China's case, they really, you know, really pumped up construction for a long time and really had great employment numbers and everything for a very long time. But if the 
people end up not using these buildings, very similar to the office building problem here in the United States, where people just aren't using office buildings anymore. But, you know, it's sort of like, what are these buildings worth then? And the truth is they're worthless, but nobody wants to admit it. And so, you know, I think China has gotten itself into a pretty big pickle here economically. And it and it reminds me very much of the financial crisis in the United States. So the government's going to have to move very quickly to shore up these financial institutions. They're going to have to print a lot of money and they're going to have to take the losses and not expect Chinese you know, citizens to uh, you know, lose their life savings. And, and you know, this could cause a lot of unrest in China. So this is a very interesting situation. Mm. Many thanks for speaking to us this morning. Ross Gerber, their co-founder, president and CEO at Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management.